Winter was already past, the roads opening and the port fall in bloom, when King Noble the Lion had all the beasts assembled in his great hall to hold court. Not a single beast was bold enough to stay away, and all hurried there, except for Renard the Fox. And before all the other animals, Isengrim the Wolf, no friend of Renard's, said to the king, Sire, my lord, grant me justice in the matter of Renard's treatment of my wife, Hercent. He's greatly wronged her, said, by taking advantage of her and making a cuckold of me before dashing off to Maupertuis. Iss and grim, iss and grim, that will do. You're doing yourself no good and just drawing attention to the shame you've suffered. Let it go. Even kings get cuckolded nowadays. Really, never was so much fury and misery caused by so trivial a mischief. One of the things with the Reynard the Fox stories is that they were originally written in French. However, the way I'm interested in illustrating the stories is in a very English way. And to me, the stories seem full of English history. Because really, when the stories were first recorded here, England was in much of France and the English courts spoke French. So it, it, it doesn't seem to me surprising that the names of these characters, some of them are French, and that, that seems perfectly normal to me, that they should, they should be like that. However, um, the stories have been popular for all of this time through Elizabethan England, Georgian England, Victorian England, and I want my illustrations to have those, those things in them. So it's not going to be set in one time. It's not going to be just a medieval book. As the story goes through, rather like you might notice a small village that you return to gradually changing. I would like the illustrations to be like that too. So you might see things in the pictures that are from Georgian England or Elizabethan England or Victorian England. That, that is fine. It's not going to be historically accurate. I recently read a book by the broadcaster Jack Hargreaves who mentioned that if the span of years between a father and son was 25 years, therefore the span between between grandson and grandfather would be 50 years, he reckoned with just 16 conversations, one to one, you could get back to the time of the Black Death. That does seem to me extraordinary, and one of the things Jack Harvey writes about is the catastrophic change in rural life and England over the last 150 years, how it's changed beyond recognition. So that was another element I was quite keen to get in the book. Renard and Bruin set off straight away, and after a time reached Lanford's wood. Lanford was a forester, and in a glade where Renard brought Bruin stood an enormous oak that Lanford was in the process of splitting. The hive's in there, my friend. Bruin, don't hold back. The honey's waiting for you. But I can't see the honey, Renard. You're not far enough in. You must be almost touching it. I can't get at it. The truth was that the bear would never get any honey because there was no honey in the oak at all. Whilst Brogue was trying to get the honey that wasn't there, Renard, with a mighty effort, pulled the wedges from the tree. The wedges came out with a snap and Bruin was well and truly trapped. Thought you'd deliver me to Noble, did you, Bruin? Hmm. I don't think you'll be delivering anyone anywhere. But Renard did not hang around to enjoy his trickery because from out of the woods appeared Lanford the forester. It's the bear! Hearing the terrifying fury of Lanford and his gang getting nearer and nearer, it occurred to Bruin that he'd have to lose his scalp or lose his life. Bruin pulled and pulled, but still his head stuck fast. The wood was alive with peasants, and they were all out for the bear's skin. Some carried axes, some carried farm tools, some hawthorn sticks. Well, the Reynard the Fox stories are a thousand years old. They probably go back further than that. I've put these stories together from different translations and different editions, mainly the Caxton translation of the 15th century, but some earlier um, French editions and Dutch editions as well. 
One of the things with the stories, the Reynolds stories, is that they don't have much of a narrative because really they're mainly short stories. And if people know them at all today, what they usually know them as are children's stories. That, that's usually what people know, but, but there are many, many more stories than that. And they are loosely linked together around the narrative of Reynard's trial. And that's what I've chosen as the main focus of these stories, the trial and eventual sentencing of Reynard, um, which gives the story some so a bit more narrative and makes it a bit more of a page turner, really. Um, one of the things that interests me about these stories is the names of the characters, because even people who don't know the Reynard stories are familiar with the names. Reynard the fox, many people are familiar with a fox being called Reynard. Some people refer to a fox as Reynard. We, when we first moved into our house, we had a neighbour who used to call our cat Tibby. He just called any cat, any brown cat, Tibby. And that comes from Tibber, the cat. And I think that's very interesting that these stories are so old and yet we still refer to animals by these names. <laughs>